Intended for an adult audience. Love, love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Sexually oriented content. Mm, listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey, everybody. It's the Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician. Dishes, pass, and battle box. Dr. Drew playing a little paintball today with the kitties. Can you imagine that? Sort of. Should I have called you? No. no. No, I had to work. Yeah, but I mean, would you have come if, if uh, you weren't working? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would have come it's, if it's, I wasn't working. It's pretty yeah. cool. It's amazing to watch males down to the age of 11 turn into commandos in like four seconds. Yeah. A, a, an authority structure develops, a whole behavior system, a team. Yeah. A, an adrenaline's pumping, right? Big I mean, time. I what told happened? you. Uh, it's, oh, my eye. Yeah. I had a, like ingrown hair oh, in my no. dad tried to pick it out with a, a needle about uh, that. That can get kind of serious. Uh, this, yeah, it got a little infected or something. I don't know what's Seriously, wrong with that it. That goes right back to the brain. Nah, that's all right. Come hot, see, come hot saw. towels on there, right? Hot towels? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And if, it, if t- tomorrow you wake up with a big one, it's got to be on antibiotics. No, I, I Possibly do that. IV. Now, I'll tell you how I sterilize stuff. I do that thing where I take the. Uh, bottle of rubbing alcohol and I actually just put, bend my head down and put the opening on whatever area is and I just lean back and just slosh it on there and then lean forward and it drips back in. That's how I do it. This is the one That's time a pirate does it. Your genius may have uh, done you in. Well, I, I don't know what to do. I had an in, no kidding. I had an ingrown hair that was like right about I'll, I'll do it on the other side. It was right it was in my eyebrow. Yeah. It was the bottom of my eyebrow and it was like ingrown and it felt like a little hard pee under there for for two weeks, you know, and it, now here's the thing about an ingrown hair. It's not like a zit. Mm. It's there until you get that hair out of there, and it keeps growing. It's crazy. It's like the uh, picture How do you know of it wasn't, Dorian is, is Gray. It a, isn't a cyst. Nah, I don't know. Look, because it was right off the brows, right it's where the hair thing place. was. This thing that's a cyst. Oh, the right, cyst. That one there my whole life. Yeah, right. Quite I though. didn't either, so I did. Here's the point. I uh, At a certain point, you got to go after it. Enough is enough. Yeah. So I go for I go for my piercing. Yeah. You know, I, t- I take my uh, my uh, what, mm-hmm. what, my lance mm-hmm. and I lance it. And I and I but I wasn't hitting pay dirt this time. And I think I irritated the thing. And then you, it got like no swollen. And I start wrenching on it. Oh, and man. it says there's like a little hair or something no. in there. Well, even smoking crack, even at speed. What speed makes talking? you pick a thing. Think their hairs. I'll in your tell you skin. what makes you pick at stuff when it's sitting there for goddamn two weeks, not doing anything. Uh, just it's not inflamed. It's just like a little. Hey, you got one. That's a, that's not an ingrown hair. You got ingrown hair. That's not ingrown hair. Hey, Chris, you see Drew's ingrown hair? It's right where my ingrown yeah, hair is. Yeah, that's what I'm showing you. That's why I'm yeah. showing it to you. These yeah. were cysts develop really Ooh, commonly. You got a cyst, brother. I do, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you better watch that. They're hard to take out. They leave scars. Don't you just take leave them alone. Don't take a needle to it. No kidding. I'm staring at that pus pocket right in your eyeball <laughs> tonight. I won't be thinking about doing anything tomorrow. Oh, it hurts. Oh, it's, it's so dangerous. Why is it dangerous? Because it goes right into your central nervous system. Ah, yeah, everything's dangerous with you. All right, all right, Mister Danger, playing uh, playing paintball. What yeah. is that? That's good for your health. No, it's good time. You take you take one of those. Uh, Cow markers right in the tonsils when you're yawning. Pow. Goes right to your brain. No, you have tons of gear on. Tons. Yeah, what are you wearing? Drew, like so it. how many hours of paintball did you get into? Four hours. Four hours? Yeah. Diving, rolling and stuff. Following you're exhausted, mud. right? Yeah. Don't worry. You have no idea when you're in it. I told you. you the no ad- adrenaline kicks in. You're just, you're, all you can think about is not getting shot. That's all. Oh, and or shooting somebody else. So it's a, yeah, there's yeah. a simultaneous thing right. that's extra intense. Did you have a good gun? You have the hopper up there? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You're firing, I, squeezing them I, off? I, I, yeah. I mean, it's so many, so many different games. I can't I don't know where to start. But you're cheap, so it... Uh, no, we kept buying more and more. We and did. More. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. It's a very expensive. That's true. I could see it like a, a nickel a trigger. You'd be going like 5, 10, 20, 15, 20, 20, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, yeah, like like you're just you're just hearing like a cash register sound during the gun during the gunfight, right? It was a lot of fun though. Really, yeah. you build teams, you get to know people. I swear to God, if I were going to form a, like a business team, that's how you do it. That's how I would do it. You pick in, those guys. Two, no, no, no. I would just I would take that group to to paintball, it, and in an hour you'd have a team. Yeah, you and mean you would, it, you would know more about each other than you'd know from eighteen hours instead there of doing like one other. of these motivational weekends. Nah, you'd get get some paintball. You should those man show guys and stuff you had. You should have just take them more paintball instead. 
You would have you you, man show was baseball. We you would have known need. everybody, everything. You you immediately know everybody's strengths and weaknesses, but they can't. It can't do. You know who the authority structure is. Out of, out of, it's just, and it functions as a unit. All right, that's true. Fun. Hooked on paintball. He'll never and do it again. Never by do the it again. Way, but, but hooked on it. But I had a good it's time, a way but, of life. But he'll telling, never do it again. I was telling Adam, there's there's three kinds of guys there. It's like 500 guys. It's a huge, huge these these paintball lands. I mean, mm -hmm. it's unbelievable. Uh, hundreds of guys look like Marines. Mm -hmm. uh, a, uh, a quarter of the guys look like the um, comic strip book store, yeah. comic book store owner from the yeah, Simpsons. There's, there's, the, you know, it's it's a weird thing that the nerds are into, it, which is combat. Yeah, uh, it seems big. to be they, more. Got to be big though. Medieval type. Of, yeah, these are guys, and they carry the most outrageous weapons. Oh yeah, yeah. it all it 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 goes into their toys. Yeah. yeah, and it's and these guys are long past the days of trying to stay in shape and get laid and six pack abs. Oh, no, and, no, no, no. You know, no. they just wear their hair in ponytails like a bizarre facial hair. They two, live at the 280 minimum. House. 280 minimum. 280. Uh, they call the guys 280 Pee Wee. Yeah. In the group because yeah. they tiny. run about 370. Tiny. Just call That's tiny. right. And then the other the other 40, 25 percent are all um, uh, be real from uh, Cypress Hill. Really? The, yeah. uh, all the rest of the guys are that. Just uh, Heshers looking yeah. to burn a little THC. Absolutely. And, and it's funny you watch the video. Sort of life's a video. It's like a real life video game that they're in. Yeah, yeah. And you know they get baked before they do it. Well, too. The video, they and show you a video beforehand, like no drugs or alcohol allowed. On drugs and alcohol. Enjoy yeah. them afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy your drugs afterwards. But no, we'll put you in jail if we find them on the park. Yes, yeah, so these guys are getting baked, and when you get baked. Well, here's the thing. It's like when you get baked and you get one of those like uh, car simulator race car things and yeah. stuff. You're not in a simulator. You're on the track. Yeah. And imagine you get baked and you go have a paintball skirmish. Oh. You're a nam. As uh, one of my sons said, he goes, he's talking to his sister. He goes, Paulina, imagine it's the Revolutionary War, except you're there. You're in it. <laughs> it's like the Revolutionary it's like, oh War. <laughs> Yeah, except for your your musket <laughs> fires a hundred rounds a minute instead of taking twenty minutes. I, I that whole that whole uh, loading that musket is that? a disaster. Yeah. All right, should we get to the phones? Let's do. It. I want to give uh, everyone a heads up, uh, which is uh, I'm hosting this uh, Comedy Central uh, two hour birthday bar mitzvah bash or something. It's on Comedy Central tonight, but uh, I don't know when it's on. Danielle. Yep. You're seventeen. Yep. What's up? Well, I was with this guy for three years, and we had broken up about six months ago. And after we had broken up, we started fooling around again. Mm -hmm. So wait, wait, say, say that again. You're with the guy how long? Three, three years. years. And you three. broke up how long ago? Six months ago. How old is he? Twenty. All right. That's what I figured. Yeah. So yeah. like, I don't know. Just wait. just imagine, Daniel. Just imagine for a second when you started dating him. He was your age, <laughs> and and you were fourteen. Yep. How'd you like to date a fourteen-year-old now? Oh, that would, I would be so awkward. I how about a gut? How about one of your peers dating a fourteen-year-old? I probably wouldn't be okay with it. All right, that's who this guy is. Yeah. It's not right. the years so special. It's three years, though. I mean, it's it's not eleven yeah, years. but it was I mean? it was a fourteen-year-old. That's the point. Right. It's a little weird. <laughs> a lot weird. Uh, just it, think about that when you're well, thinking about staying I'll, away from I'll this tell you what. I'll tell you what makes. What you do? Punch my mic now? <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what makes it weird is. If you're if you're all in the same school, it's like I said. This is the problem with this ninth grade through senior BS. Mm -hmm. If you're the ninth grader in your school and you're a senior, that's about the age difference we're talking about, mm -hmm. and they they go to the same classes you do. I understand it happens, but just I just want to put it in perspective a little bit. Just by you know. how are you supposed to tell high schoolers not to date high schoolers? Do you know what I'm saying? I, I understand what you're thank saying, you. but but freshmen look like freshmen when you're seniors. Oh, so. thank I'm no, just, hey, 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 think about it, Danielle. You're, you, you want to date some freshmen? Go ahead. I'm just saying, back in my day, we went 7th, 8th, 9th, and then we went to high school. Yeah. I don't think it's, and no one ever brings this up, but I don't think it's the world's greatest plan to put 14-year-old chicks in with 17, 18-year-old year old dudes yeah. who, who idolize these guys. Right, that's right. Right? Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. All I'm right. You. So, Danielle, what, so you're back with him again? Well, kind of. Like, he has a girlfriend right now. Yeah. So we're kind of like, you know, trying to, like, hide it and whatever, but... Hide what? Hide what? Hide our Their relationship. Love. Their love. Ooh. Well, you're back. <laughs> you're not in a relationship because he has a he girlfriend. Has girlfriend. Well, yeah. <laughs> so he's just right. he's just exploiting you the way he used to when you were underage. Just yeah. a new, ki new kind of exploitation, Danielle. Now you're just the other woman. 
which sucks, and I hate it. Yeah, well, this guy's an asshole. So no. just break up. Oh, yes, he guy. is. Oh, just he may not seem lumps. like it, but he is. Oh, don't listen to Drew. Look, who cares? Don't get pregnant. Because that will Daniel's really be... not that one. He's, she's not the one. That'll be the pregnant. legacy this guy leaves behind. Well, she's under this guy's spell. Yeah. I yeah. yeah. And, well, the, why? and the, the less he pays attention to you, the more he screws you over, no, the more No, why do you have to be is. exploited? That's, that's the relationship you must have is the exploitation. Why? Uh, I have no idea. Love, I guess. I don't know. No. Love. No, please. Not... Who do you think you're talking to? <laughs> Where, where's your dad? Um, here. I don't Here? know. Yeah, he's, he's asleep. <laughs> all right. Is he good? Do you love him? Um, no. What's uh, the matter? There we go. Why no? He's an alcoholic and he treats him. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. Speaking of treating people like S, that's uh, basically what you've reproduced here. Yeah. He also dropped the S bomb. That's what I'm saying. Look, so anyway, yeah. so there you go. There's your model for how men and women relate. And you're, you're hell bent on recreating that in your own love life. That's good times. Yeah. It's great. Okay. Well, there stop you go, it. Daddy. Stop it. I don't know if you can stop it. How about she goes to Alateen? Yeah, that would certainly be very right, helpful. Look. Okay, so, Danielle, you called us. You want to know our opinion. We told it to you, and then we're giving you some advice, which is go to an Alateen meeting. You know. Or just ignore it all and yeah. get on with your miserable life. But let me just tell you something, everybody. Um, seven. Uh, I Okay. Let, let me impart some wisdom in all you retards out there. 16, 17, 18. The, these are the launching pad numbers. Mm -hmm. You will get sent in a trajectory mm -hmm. that you may take to the grave. I swear to Christ, no, you, you idiots. You will. And you're either, uh, either no. going to hit your orbit no. or you're going to end up in the Pacific no. Ocean. That's it. No. no. No, it's not you will. I, oh, most of my friends got going in a stupid direction. It took them about 20 years to straighten it out. Okay, but there's still a crappy a, twenty years. Their, their uh, orbit is different orbit than it would have been had they hit the orbit they were if they set the right trajectory at sixteen seventeen. Yeah, yeah, That's but what I'm I'm saying. you're saying you're, you're saying you're saying to the grave. You're saying forever. It, the trajectory you choose at that age will affect you to your grave. Well, I will stand by that. All right. Well, that's just a, you're hiding behind a technicality. Uh, look, look, I, look. I had a crappy tra trajectory. I'm fine. <laughs> okay? Shut oh. up. How dare you? I could buy and sell you. And sell you. <laughs> How about I just buy you? That's enough, right? <laughs> no so. no ass you could sell. Yeah. I could buy that car and sell it. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. You, you got the pink slip. That's, That's how right. it works. Do it the next day if you want. Look. Uh, most you're, Yes, Drew is right that most people, once they take that crappy trajectory... They just go, they take it to the grave. In some respect. It, it, the orbit just no. is different no, than no, if it no, hit no, the orbit no. there, it no, should no, be no, aiming for. No, now, right. no, I'm not, yeah. I'm, now I'm not agreeing with All you right. again. What I'm saying is, is it just, look, would you just agree with me? I agree Most with people are going to, they'll, they'll take it to the grave. Right. Handful of people can change and have fruitful lives. Yes, they'll have memories and experiences and, you know, might have some scars, but they will, they can straighten their lives out. Uh, Here's the deal. Why why f around at sixteen, seventeen, eighteen? Why do that? Why get in these horrible patterns? Why yeah, yeah. pick up uh, heroin? Why experiment with this stuff? Why have the unprotected sex where you get knocked up and get the kid at eighteen? Why go down that path? Because they, the whole thing about that path too is you just you just you gather momentum. You know, I've, I've been I'm preparing for this next book. I'm I'm hoping to write. No, oh, but, but listen, but listen to me for a second. Barely done with the last one. I know, and uh, coming out in paper in the fall, by the way. Mm. And, and I've been reading a lot of philosophy and myth and stuff like that. I'm realizing that people, the way they got people to sort of come around in the old days was with myth. Yeah. It's like, if you don't, here's what'll happen. Right. If you, if you know, we're, we're, we're trying to talk to you rationally. Maybe we got to, if we could tell stories, Adam, just mm -hmm. mythological stories about Zeus or Imhotep or something, maybe then they'd listen to us. All right. Uh, I got it. I got it. I, look. You know, I grew up in a place, and once in a while I sit down with my uh, friends and talk about all our, uh, eh, some buddies and some just guys we knew. A lot of them are dead. I, I really had this conversation recently. Some AIDS, a lot of like motorcycle accidents, mm -hmm. whatever, drug all, overdoses. All, I bet all addict alcoholics. Uh, most, most. Pretty well, much. Drew, you could, you know, you, you, could, you could talk the Pope into thinking he had a problem with heroin. <laughs> Uh, not by our standards, but uh, certainly by your weak standards. Yes. The point is, is it? It's uh, not everyone makes it to uh, thirty, mm -hmm. and uh, you start. You know, you log enough miles on a motorcycle loaded, 
you're probably not gonna you're probably not gonna do but, it. But by the way, think about this: of all the young people you know that died, although they died, some of them died of AIDS. None of them died of random medical diseases. No, they all died of things directly related to their mental health. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, well, things they brought on themselves because of behaviors. That's right. All right, everybody. Kevin. Yeah. You're 16. Yeah, I am. What's up? Uh, yeah, I've noticed for like within the last couple of months, I've developed sort of man boobs, and I don't know how I got them, and I want to know how I can get rid of them. Mm-hmm. Both sides equal? Yeah, yeah, not up far enough apart that I can tell. Adam, translate that one for me. He can't tell because they're like eight inches apart, so he can't do a side by side taste test I on see. his. He can't boobs. do water displacement simultaneously. Right, uh, Kevin. Sixteen's a little old to be getting this uh, sort of naturally. It's something that happens around thirteen, fourteen, when the adrenal glands produce some estrogen, just as your testosterone's kind of coming on board. The way to get that sustained until sixteen is uh, smoking a lot of pot. Yeah, I've so is been that doing you? that since I was like thirteen. Well, there you go. So now here's how you get rid of them: stop right. smoking pot. Stop smoking pot. Yeah, and they'll That's just it. go away. No, they, they will. Yes, they generally will. You got a genetic predisposition for the man, boob, and they will generally it. go away at uh, this age if you stop smoking. All right, pot. stop smoking pot. Okay. And call us back in six months when, when the, you haven't smoked pot for six months, yeah. and then uh, we'll work on Plan B as far as getting rid of those man boobs. All right, T. That's where you listen to the Ace Man. Okay. But look, quit smoking the weed anyway. Okay. And if you can't stop, yeah, you got to look into treatment because it's uh, something to eat. Yeah. Yeah, good luck. All right, and, there, everybody. Enjoy, Kevin. Thank you, my man. Uh, all right. Poor guys with the man boobs. You know, when you see the dudes with the man <laughs> boobs that are fat, in a way, it's better because it's like, well, yeah, looks like a fat guy with his shirt off. Mm-hmm. Once in a while, you get the, uh, you know, 150-pound guy with the man boobs. That is a bad hand that is dealt. Yeah. Pot's a great way to get that. Mm. Are you saying pot doesn't do that? Yeah. No, here's what I'm saying. We see that all the time. No, we don't. We, I see that all the time. Here's what you see. If, if you got a genetic predisposition to something, maybe the pot's gonna not going to help your That's cause. That's 13, 14-year-old. You're 16, 17. It's the pot. Really? Oh, yeah. absolutely. What, what do you think it doesn't do? Is it estrogen levels go crazy high. Their testosterone every, drops. Everybody, every, every guy I grew up with, eh, three cores of them smoked a ton of weed. No one had the man boobs. Never saw it. Never saw it. Hmm. Never saw it on anybody. And these guys smoked weed nonstop. So where's the yeah, man but boobs? You had guys that had crazy testosterone levels and stuff, right? And eh, not all of them. <laughs> Donnie didn't have uh, man boobs? How dare you bring his name up? No. Hmm. God knows I checked. All right. Let's do it Germany or Florida. Drew, I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It's well, I'm telling you, I see a lot of it. And I mean, you're right. It's not everybody that gets it. That's true. Uh, Shannon? Yeah? You're 20? Yep. What's up? Okay, first of all, I want to say, Dr. Drew, I think you're, like, amazing, and you're my role model. Thanks, I'm Shannon. in a nursing school right now, and I want to go into chemical dependency when I graduate. Please read my book, Cracked. I'm serious. I have, and it was good. very good. It really helps you as a caretaker understand about boundaries. That's sort of the idea, the metaphor of the book is that. So. Yeah, actually reading that book made me go towards chemical dependency. Wow, that's cool. Like. So, Thank you. Yeah. Um, and I have a Germany or Florida. All right. Um, a mother Germany and her boyfriend. Germany or Florida. <laughs> a mother What's and her that? boyfriend Thanks. tried to auction off the woman's eight-year-old daughter on eBay. They posted her picture in an item description that said you can play with her. The starting bid was $1.19. There were three bids before police were able to get the auction off the Internet, and the highest bid was $30.35. Wow. Mm. I kind of heard something about this. I kind of did, too, but I don't know where it was from. I, I think it was a U.S. thing. Feels very Floridian. Yeah. Shannon. Mm-hmm. You a big gal? Um, not really. <laughs> where do you go? Okay, well, we've been through this before, and you called me fat last time, so... <laughs> Give it to me. I just hear it. I can hear it in voice. Where are you going? Huh? What's your weight? What are you smoking? Yeah. Um, what do you weigh? I'm 5'11", and I weigh about 170. Yeah. 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 5'11". Yeah. I just... Here's all I mean. I, I went... Uh, went at first, I heard her voice... Here's what I do. Here's how I work. Do you have a score? Correct. Yeah, I heard. If I start everyone at 135, <laughs> then I heard her voice. Uh, she went up to 150. She's, then what, what was it about she, her voice? 
and it's just it's just a full voice. Then it's a husky voice. Then she said, uh, fan of Dr. Drew. I put her at 155. <laughs> then she said, read the book, 160. Then she said, uh, nursing student. I uh, put her up to 175. And then Germany or Florida. So you overshot. Uh, well, if I had a scale, I think I'd be right. But the, the Germany or Florida cranked on a few. Shannon? Yeah? All right. Now, we're going to make a guess. Okay. All right. I'm going to say Florida. I'll guess the same. It's Germany. Oh. oh. Oh, and one to start the new week. <sighs> That's brutal, Shannon. Yeah. All right, baby doll. We're going to send you out a windbreaker. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> All right, sweetie P. Thanks for calling. Okay, hey, thanks. All yeah. right, good luck. Keep reading them Dr. Drew books, everybody. Let's see, boyfriend is herpes. She wear a condom during oral. He, boyfriend, herpes. Wait a minute. Is this female. a dude? Female. Oh. It's Casey's the female. Yeah. Okay. That's what that F is for. Yeah. Casey? Yeah? Ooh. What's happening, baby doll? <laughs> um, it's not really that, actually. Um, I think I have, like, a problem being attracted to older men. Hmm. What, what does the uh, herpes question have to do with anything? Well, because he's an older man. He's not actually 16, 23. He's no. 23 with herpes. He gets well, more and more yeah. attractive by the minute, this yeah. guy. Is he on heroin? That would just put him over <laughs> yeah, the top. Yeah, still living at home, driving what? a donkey. Playing paintball. Plays paintball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So let's see. Uh, well, he's 23 and you're 15. Mm-hmm. Uh, is he your boyfriend or what is he? No. Well, how do you know he likes you? Uh, kind of because we kind of pulled around a little bit. Who who Where, is he? Do you work with him? No. Where'd you meet him? What? Where did you meet him? Yeah, okay, I'm done with Casey. Uh, she's distracted or whatever. Right, I don't the, want to the talk fact to her. is, is this, this is a catastrophe. Fifteen year old to twenty three year old. You said where'd you meet him? My hand immediately just went for that because it, it, it she would never you're never gonna get them all. You're just gonna get what? And that wasn't a what. Like I didn't hear you. What? That's the stupid teenage what we get every night, which is I'm buying time or I'm watching something. Mm-hmm. All right, Lux, he's 23, you're 15. He's a criminal, period. Do not do anything with him. End of story. He should have herpes, he should have crabs, he should have AIDS, he should have hepatitis, he should have everything, and you should stay and away from him. he should have hair where his teeth should fall out and, and hair his, should grow in its And place. his head should grow in the ground like an onion. <laughs> Putting Yiddish curses on this guy. He, uh, yeah, let's see. His, uh, yeah. Teeth. He has teeth, yeah. Now, what was I thinking about? I don't know. He he, he should get leopard, leprosy. <sighs> There's what he should get. He should. It's not good enough. See, with the Yiddish curse, you got to have, he should have this, and not only that, he should have this. He should have this, then that. All right, yes. Yeah, so his teeth should fall out. And, and then hair, hair should then grow in its place. Right. His head should grow on the ground like <laughs> With his feet up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll uh, take ourselves a little break. When we come back... Uh, just had a botched plastic surgery on his man boobs. It's man boobs tonight. Only. Man boob night. Mm-hmm. John's 27. That'll be good. All right. After this. Hey, everybody. Love line. I'm Adam. This is a good partner over there. Doc. <laughs> God damn, this guy cracks me up. Here we go. Before yeah, you... happen back on the phones. Uh, who do we got coming up here? Yeah, we got Sharon Osborne's coming in uh, tomorrow night. <laughs> She's a funny little lassie. <laughs> Talk to her about her trials and tribulations. I'll tell you what. Strong woman, Drew. You know, I tell you, I do a lot of kidding on the radio, but it's Sharon Osborne, strong, strong lady. Strong lady. Strong lady, Drew. And likes to shop. <laughs> I tell you what, passionate, 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 passionate woman and a dear, 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 dear friend of the shows. And not is. only the shows, but Dr. Drew. So she's coming in tomorrow night. We look forward to that. Uh, we hop back on the phone. Speak to John over here. Seven twenty-two, twenty-two after seven. We hop on the phones. We we'll speak to uh, John. That's uh, thirty-eight away from the top there. We'll uh, speak to John over here on line three. John, yeah. 27, having a little problem with man boobs. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm hoping I can get a good answer from you guys because yeah. I had a bot surgery and I seem to mm. not have any luck getting a straight answer from the medical community or the legal community. On yeah, what's, what's the question? 
Well, I uh, I have gynecomastia. And For what? Uh, a- any particular reason? Uh, puberty. You got a bad, bad. So you had it. You had it since you were thirteen. Down. Bad hand. Yeah. Are yeah. you overweight? No. Okay, so you're just one of those people that had that. Did you smoke a lot of pot? No. No. Okay. Shocking. Were you? Were you? Shocking. Just, okay, it's, keep going. It, Go it's ahead. from puberty. I believe uh, yeah. me. I've been That's evaluated. Fine. That's fine. Uh, in, in, in going to get this taken care of, I got a couple of consults from other plastic surgeons, and they all said that they would nice have, rack. Uh, mm-hmm. An excision with liposuction. Right. The doctor I ended up going with said he could do it with just liposuction, right. and it was a lot cheaper. Right. Well, he got in there with the cannula, and he found out he couldn't get out the, there's like a harder tissue in there underneath right. the fat. Right. And when I healed up, I basically look exactly the same. Right. So my thing is, I, I figure that he's he should have to, you know, fix it for free. He's, no. He wants to there's charge the, me no, no way you'll get that. No way. Really? No way. Well, well no, no. What about the part where... Okay, there's there's no you, guarantees with any medical what, procedure. Did you... You Probably paid. Probably did guarantee it for me. Basically, Guar- what did he guarantee? I mean, I, I said, look, other doctors said that it would take an excision plus liposuction. Are you sure you can do it with just liposuction? He said, absolutely. He was sure. He was he, he was, was wrong. Sure. He was wrong. There are no guarantees. Wrong. There are no guarantees with any medical procedures. Doctors are often wrong, and that's the nature of being in the medical system. Unfortunately, there every time you interact with the physician, you risk harm. Not yeah. just not getting what you want, but actually harm. Yeah, Drew's mostly wrong. Hey, John. Yeah. Uh, did you pay him? Yes. So you paid him in full? Yes. See, I think what you can do is now, far, see, th- th- that's yeah, the, the part you can you can get, sort of negotiate sometimes. Yeah, now, it well. You say, I, hey, I didn't get what I wanted. If you don't, if you don't uh, dismiss this fee, I'm going to sue you for, I don't know, something. It, it, why did you pay him in full, by the way? Because pretty much every plastic surgeon required everything in advance. Oh, they they pay in full in advance. I, I would yeah. think if you wanted to go through that, the problem is that as soon as you get an attorney involved, whatever you might re- sort of recoup from this, essentially all of it will go to the attorney. Well, I was thinking um, about doing it myself in small claims. Well, how much how much did you pay him? Uh, about three thousand. About three thousand, and and he charged you uh, for the liposuction procedure, even though he never did it. Or no, he, he did, did it. it and then realized it wasn't going to help. He sucked some fat out, but then there's this harder tissue that right. can be sucked out. Right. So in his, in his mind, is like, look, I charge you for three grand to do lipo. I did it. I opened you up. I did all the lipo I could do. It didn't work. And I closed you back up. Yeah. And that's what I charged the three grand for. Right. Didn't, get, didn't have the desired result, but I did what I said I was going to do. Right. So here's... Just like yeah, if you, yeah. That's the problem. If yeah. he... Did a lipo, even if it was, I guess, a light lipo. No, it, was just, it just didn't have the desired result. Well, I, I understand, but maybe he didn't take out as much lipo tissue as he, he you know, thought he was going to do. He realized he, he goofed. As I was coming out of it, he kind of said to me, oh, there was some harder tissue in there. I just couldn't get out through the cannula. So, right. and, and I don't know. Look- right. But, That's but correct. The, Hopefully the, it'll look good. But the point is... Thank is God he didn't do more. Hurt you, you. You paid him for a lipo. He did a lipo. It didn't work. He was wrong. It's bad times for you, but yeah, I don't really, I don't really see a lawsuit. I, no. I, I, I just, you know, unless your dad's an attorney, wants to do some uh, pro bono work for his yeah. kid, I, I just can't see it. So yeah. now, what you got to take you, the hit then? Well, what you could do is, uh, it, uh, depending on what you think of the guy, is go back and go look. I, you know, I feel like I didn't get the desired result. Yeah, would you mind taking this out? What about out? the hard tissue? Yeah. Can we talk? What can we do with this? Right. I mean, hopefully the guy will have. You know, some yes. sympathy. Yes, and say, can you, for, for some kind of markedly reduced rate, will you finish this procedure, please? Since you set out to do it, you were wrong, you misled me. I feel, you know, I'm going to talk about you negatively, and I'm not going to feel good about this. If you want to have a, right. you know, retain your sort of uh, reputation, I think you'd want to make this right. Yeah. That's all. He's calling from uh, Wyoming. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, you got to come out to L.A. Look at Dr. Marcel get right on there. Oh, yeah. Oh, that laser, that Dr. Marcel. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, by the way, you got charged for that laser. What'd that do for you? Jackass. Hey, uh, 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 I should sue Dr. Marcel. Hey, that goddamn... First off, that effing, you know, his office is uh, 7,000 nautical miles from my house. Yes. Secondly, he's like, yeah, come by. We got the lady with the laser. Now, here was the plan. 
you get a little, you get a neck rash down here like a black man does. You got that curly hair on your neck; it grows different directions. Well, just laser that; it'll fall out. You'll never shave there again. Thus, end of rash. All right. So I hold my ass all the way down there. By the way, laser painful on the Adam's apple. Painful. <laughs> it, I don't think it would be bad if you're getting a tattoo removed from the meaty part of your shoulder, yeah. but when it's uh, whacking oh. on your uh, Adam's apple, it hurts. Yeah. Very uncomfortable. Get that stuff burned away. Then walk around looking like I have sunburn on my neck. Uh, by the way, charge me full price. And uh, eh, hair, no, nah, didn't fall out. And then uh, next time, uh, two sessions, uh, all I did was get horrible ingrown hairs when the ones that fell out grew back, this time way underneath the skin instead of, you know, already hanging out a little. So, Good times. Yeah, it was a couple hundred bucks, a uh, lot of driving, a burnt neck, uh, quite a bit of pain. And uh, the end result was uh, huge ingrown hairs all over my neck as this uh, disaster started to uh, grow back. And Drew, as you can see, oh, yeah, the laser. Yeah, there's oh, nothing there except the, the huge beard. <laughs> oh, my God. What, what's going on with these lasers? And where's my money? And who do I sue? Oh, the laser. <laughs> B.S. Kiss my ass with this laser. I swear to Christ, it didn't do a goddamn thing. Yeah, I could have got the hair off the little lighter fluid. Sure, you burn it off, it goes away. Of course, you burned it. Then it comes back. Uh, and you know, there always that. There was, uh, you know, there's, there's that. It's always that, 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 that shady, murky shade of gray where, well, sometimes it takes multiple, but uh, not everybody. <laughs> People with more melanin in this. <laughs> if you got a really, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, where's that Marcel? Where's my money? You know how to do? How to get him to uh, pawn one of those? Just one pinky ring, just one. On your behalf. Just one pinky ring. Get my money back for that stupid lady. Not only do I, want, I want my money, I want my I want gas money, too. I wasted a whole Every goddamn time. day driving over there. Took a whole goddamn day to have this uh, witch from uh, some Baltic Republic. that they, I'm strapped down like a, like a Bond. Like it was like James Bond. She was like a Bond villain going at my neck with this goddamn laser. <laughs> Nothing. As, you know what I would have been? Here's what, here, uh, here's, here's what it's basic. Here's what it's equivalent. Someone said, look... Uh, Give me $150, uh, drive your car in a circle around uh, your block for uh, two hours, then get out. I'm going to hit you with an oar in the stomach and, uh, and then drive in a circle for another two hours and then go back home. That, 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 was, that, was, that was the procedure. Trauma. Uh, the, the oar would have been better because it would have just been one shot. Pain and suffering. <sighs> See it now. Goddamn waste of the weather. Solar Dad. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. What's up? What the hell's wrong with that, Marcy? What? What's going on? Okay. See, um, like, last year, my dad got married, or, like, a year and a half ago, he got married to this girl that's, like, 25, or he, she was is, 25. How old is he? And she's 26 now, and my dad's 46. All right. And so we got along until, like, um, a month after they, like, engaged. She had told my dad that she hated me. <laughs> And I didn't no, understand she it. Didn't tell, she didn't tell him. him and that. so, like, ever since then. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah? She didn't tell your dad she hated you. I was right next to him. And what I were her know, words exactly? What were her words? She's like, well, you always give me problems, and, and that stupid daughter of yours, I hate her. And I'm like, what? I started crying. She said, I hate her. Yeah. And then she said that she didn't, like, mean it. And then I was like, okay, then why did you say it? All right. All right. Oh, I'm I'm just going off experience because my my sister hated my stepmom and would always used to say, say stuff like say, that. Yeah, I would hear everything and I was like, "Are you kidding? I was there." He yeah. didn't say that. Yeah. Chicks, by the way, have an amazing ability to say, "He said this yeah. or that," yeah. and it wasn't said. Yeah. They felt if they feel it, then it's like the person said it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So she apologized, and then after that, like we after they got married, we all moved in. And then, like, she started complaining about me all the time. What does she complain? What's the problem? Like, she says that, like, once she accused me of hitting her daughter. How old's her daughter? Um, she was three, now she's four. Mm hmm And I wouldn't hit a kid, so uh -huh. it was, like, kind of weird, and uh -huh. my dad believed her. Uh-huh. So it was like... Well, what'd your dad do to you if he believed her? I mean, if he really believed you hit a three-year-old, what'd he do to you? Well... 
Since, Nothing. Like, I don't know. I grew up in a home to where I got hit a lot. Oh, really? Did he hit you? Yeah. He hit you because he thought you hit the three-year-old? Yeah. Wow. Okay. And he, like, wow. believes everything that she says. So it's like I get in trouble for everything. Where's your yeah. mom? Yeah. They're not here. Where's your mom? Um, yeah. Oh, my real mom? Yes. Yeah. She, uh, she was in jail. She just got out, like, last week. Mm. All right. What was she in jail for? Um, for child abuse and also shoplifting, something like that. Abusing yeah. you. Right. Huh? Abusing you. Yeah. Mm. All right. So that. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, this is uh, bad time. Super white trash behavior. Yeah. Unless you guys are Mexicans. I'm not Mexican. All right. Because I would have just been, you know. But I'm not white no either. But what are you? I'm actually like Spanish, which is sort of like Mexican, but it's not. That's all the same to me. <laughs> here's here's the point. Uh, this is your mom's nuts. Your dad's an a hole. He, the, the, he married someone who's not years great. Is, e is junior. Everything's a mess. Yeah. Okay. So, but what do you do realistically? Okay. Here. Okay. Here's what you need to do. Please listen to me. I am a genius. I tell you. Okay. You need to a not do anything involving Dr. Marcel and a laser. <laughs> this is a huge waste of time. No. Okay. No boob production. <laughs> okay. No. Here's seriously what you got to do. Your dad's an a-hole. Your stepmom's a bitch. I'm sure of it. Mm -hmm. Even bad people will uh, let you go if you stay off the radar screen. Yeah. Which means, don't sass them, don't rebel, j don't don't, don't wear don't goth screw clothing. With them. Yeah, don't screw with them. Don't get the I know piercings that's your, look tattoos. Your your, at, your attitude is going to be to yank the chains and flip the switches, or to do it on yourself in a way that upsets them just to even be around right. you. Right, and yeah. Here's what you need to do. You need to be a good student. You need to do all sorts of extracurricular activities I do. at school. Good. Mm -hmm. You sound smart. You're only 13, but you do sound smart. Yeah. Now, you've been through a lot. You need to get the hell out of there. If you cannot act out, you can lay low, use your friends, use your school, become very involved with the sports and all the activities and all the before school and after school programs and all that stuff with your friends. Stay out of your stepmom's grill, stay out of your dad's grill, and then go far away to college and be well, successful. Well, see, that's well, the thing. Like, you said to, like, my, like, to, like, be involved in everything and then to have my friends. And, like, just today, my dad was like, you don't need friends, blah, 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 all because some girls that I was friends with last year egged my house. All right. So here's the deal. The, the one thing that <laughs> well, will help right. you get through this. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that blows apart Adam's theory completely. Yeah, you, yeah. Get, you get your house egged by uh, some of your friends. Your dad's going to want you not to hang out with yeah. the eggers. Here is, believe it or not, when people have gone out and studied what gets a solo dad through her life into something productive and successful for her, as opposed to somebody who, as Adam was talking about earlier, sets a trajectory that lands up crashing in the Pacific Ocean. The way Soledad gets through is with a single positive relationship with an adult, preferably your same sex, that you continue to have co contact and discussions with from now until you leave home for college. So try go out there, try to find somebody, not somebody you're attracted to, not somebody exciting, not somebody you're in love with, just somebody who is stable and around for you and who seems to give a, give a crap about what happens to you and maintain that relationship from now with an adult from now until you graduate high school. And that tends to make the difference between kids that make it through and those that uh, fall victim to the history that uh, has been so unfortunate in your case. All right. Good luck. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Paintball. <laughs> Drew played some paintball today, and the adrenaline still coursing through his veins. Yeah, it's good times. It's exciting. Yeah. yeah. It's fun. People need a little of that. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I told you. I told you to get yeah, going. I, no, I, I know. It's, you, you, it's, uh, why, yeah. The opportunity came around. I thought, Adam said this is good. I'm going. I think that'll be one of my things. When I'm on my deathbed, I'll think, I should have done more stretching, <laughs> more paintball. and I should have played more paintball. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, paintball is great. It's a blast. It's fun. I, you know, and I got some money. I got some friends. We so should go some be money. real. We should go the guy's play. guy's really into it. Be real. Right? Yeah. He's way into it. He's playing some teams and competitions and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, all right. We'll call it Be Real. <laughs> 
Don't want to go paintballing. Jim? He, he asked us last time he was up here. I know, but, it, you know, it's so ambitious, you know. Like I said, on your deathbed. Yeah. Yeah. Jim? Yeah? You're 20? Yep. You're, what's your question? Uh, my girlfriend, uh, I think she has more of, like, a sexual drive when she's off of birth control. That can happen. Really? Yeah, some women, depending on which pill they're taking... And for each uh, woman, it's different. Some women, their sex drive is suppressed by the progesterone. In fact, most often that's the case. Others, it's enhanced by that. Same is true of the estrogens. For some, the estrogen suppresses it. Some, it enhances it. And some are neutral. Each woman is different in how they respond to these hormones. So you have to kind of find how they respond to them and what they can tolerate. Oh, okay. And, uh, it, you know, it, 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 she, maybe there's other symptoms, too, that she starts to become aware of when she comes off them. Like maybe she feels a little more tired or a little more depressed. So it's something to keep an eye on. Mm -hmm. Let's talk to uh, Amber, who's 23. Amber? Hi. How are you What's, guys? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. Um, I just wanted to say, Dr. Drew, I love you. Thank you, Amber. <laughs> I think you're one of the sexiest men in America. So. Oh, my God, Amber. <laughs> Call back again. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Wait, no, wait, yeah, you hey, asked. told her to call back. Oh, you're an idiot. You asked her to call back. Oh, All right. come on. All right. All right, Amber, let's go. Come on, baby. Um, I was wondering if you can use olive oil as a lubricant or if that will upset your natural flora. <laughs> if that will, like... Irritate the skin at all. Yeah. Well, it, it, well, first off, much... if you used anything that said extra virgin on you, it would probably burst into flames when it hits your <laughs> vagina. Oh, no, Adam, be Number serious. One. No, it form little drops. They go, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Who no. is this, Mama Celeste? <laughs> I remember <laughs> I didn't think I dated myself with a frozen pizza. Oh, my God. Do they have Celeste, Mama Celeste? Uh, she's not around uh, anymore? Ann says, yes. Chris, what the hell? Your mom does all the shopping. What are you talking well, she about? She does all the home cooking. She's the Italian, right? Yeah, mom's Italian. Don't give it is Mama voice. Celeste. Quiet down over there. Yeah. Shut your own uh, Amber, uh, anything can upset the natural flora in there. You've heard us talk about it before. And, and uh, olive oil is not sort of one of the recommended lubricants. They're well, water-based, very inert lubricants inert out stuff. there. What's the definition of inert? Uh, it, it, nothing. It doesn't like, interact chemically with anything. Yeah, so it's like, I guess, to me, I think, as a lay person, I think of if organic, now, is in, in inert? Uh, the opposite of organic and if you took an inert material and just sort of left it out it would just sort of go away but it would, there wouldn't be fungus growing on it right no, inert nothing would happen nothing would happen yeah, zip, well, that's it just, what I'm saying. it's inert it said no inertia no well, that's what action. i'm saying yeah yeah nothing nothing it wouldn't go away it's just nothing well i'm saying eventually something could it happen would, yeah it could evaporate or yeah, something that's yeah. what i'm saying yeah. right it wouldn't it wouldn't transform into something else it wouldn't interact with anything right you take a piece of bread out and eventually it starts growing moss and stuff on it yeah all right, all right. so listen uh, amber <laughs> how about you just uh, spring for some nice uh, KY, yeah. right right but the problem is is when like we didn't have any in the house so i was trying to think what we could ah desperation <laughs> I, I, olive oil that. would be somewhere near the top of my you know list of maybes yeah, I mean, yeah, like, you, you start thinking Vaseline, and then you start thinking, Why you know, 30 way. That, that badly? What are they doing? What are you doing that you need lubricant that badly? <laughs> well, it's just we had, you had um, like, a strawberry condom, and I sucked off all of the lubricant that was on it, and we didn't want to, like, stop well. and go to the store or pick up some KY in the middle of it, so. Yeah, Amber's a keeper. That's <laughs> suck the lubricant right off the flavored condom. Still good to go. Out of lube. Let's uh, let's hit the pantry and see what we can find. Wow, Amber. <laughs> wow. That's a gamer. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be into using the olive oil. With the She's color. what we call a Cracker Jack. Is that right? Yeah, that's what you call a Cracker Jack. She's good to go. She's uh, she's like a MacGyver with a vagina. All right. Kimberly? Yes. You're 20? Oh, you guys cracked me up. Yes. Um, What's up? It's actually for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Almost a month ago, um, I went to the bathroom, and um, there was sort of bloody discharge, and so I waited from a couple of days, and what, I called... What, what blood discharge from your vagina? Yeah. It wasn't yeah. mid-cycle bleeding? It wasn't just... Um, actually, I haven't gotten my period since February, so... 
How can you tell a bloody discharge from from just? Bleeding? Well, because it wasn't a lot. Like it was just. No, like, that, listen, Kimber, that's just bleeding. Okay, that's but, just your cycle. Where'd your period go? I have no idea. <laughs> right, you, you need to get this more thoroughly evaluated. Okay. That that may have just been a light period. You may not be ovulating. You may have. There's a lot of things to this. This, this, well, this needs did, to be sort of sorted out. I did call the doctor, and they're like, don't worry about it. If it gets worse, call us back. But yeah, it hasn't yeah, gotten No, you, you shouldn't worry about it. It's a very common condition. to okay. have irreg- You're having your irre- very irregular periods. Yeah. You're having. And, but it, you need to, to know why. And yeah. If you, particularly if you had regular periods in the past, you need to figure this out. And it's a pretty simple workup. So go to your doctor to check that out. Okay. okay? Right. Hey, hey, but don't good, worry. But don't good worry. times. But good times. Good times. All, All right. We're going to take ourselves a little break. When we come back. We'll come back with more of the show. Hey, yes? Uh, yeah. After this. Hey, yo. Yeah, it's Love Line, I'm Adam. That's my buddy over there. Dr. Drew. Phone number. 1-800-L-O-V-E-1-9. <laughs> i tell you what. Sharon Osborne Going to be in the hizzy tomorrow night. Look forward to that, Drew. I'll tell you what. Good times. Strong, strong lady. Strong Passionate. lady. Passionate, strong, and passionate lady. Got her hands full over there with those Osborne kids. and uh, Those are her kids, matter of fact. Oh, yeah. Got, got her hands full with her kids yeah. over there. And then, of course, her uh, oldest kid, Ozzy Osborne. <laughs> Call him that because, you know. Yeah. All righty then. Are you yeah. from the tantrum? <laughs> yes, good people. All right, hopefully she'll bring one of her lap dogs in. All right, let's uh, hop back to the phones. What do you say there, Danny? All right, buddy. Danny. Hey. Hey, what's hey. happening? 19 years old. Yeah, um, well, before my question, uh, Adam, I was driving under a bridge today, and I saw yeah. a clearance sign that said 15 feet and zero inches. Yeah. And it yeah. just pissed the hell out of me. That's uh, well. Let's talk about this for just one second. Uh, this is where your tax dollars are going, by the way. It's, it's for the ridiculous. Big, all that ink for the huge zero yeah. with uh, the dash in the zero. Fifteen foot. Like uh, right. if you said to me, uh, "How tall is that crane?" and I said fifteen foot, you wouldn't go and. But or if I said how how high is that ladder reach or what's the extension of that ladder? I said fifteen foot, you wouldn't go. And yeah, but it tells you the significance to so what level of significance they can take the measurement. Because you might, you know, if you're measuring it to the inch, you mm-hmm. have to include the number of inches. If you're measuring right, it just to the foot, you could say 15 feet and not be exactly 15 feet. Uh, but but if your but thing I'm, not, is, I'm not six foot zero. Yeah, I listen, I agree. Get the word out to the uh, truckers that uh, 15 foot means 15 foot. And uh, if it is 15, 6, we'll let you we'll know. It it'll okay. it'll say it on there. Here's the other thing that drives me insane, by the way. Drew and I, oh, my God. Drew, all Drew and I do is complain. But uh, first off, there's all stuff like this. Uh, you know, when it rains out here, the sprinklers are always going off yeah. on the side of the freeway. Nothing yeah. better than a torrential downpour and then getting your windshield sprayed by uh, one of these sprinklers on the side of the freeway. Can you figure this out? Yeah. By the way, all the city does is talk about water conservation. Yeah. I can't, uh, look. For 30 bucks, you can get a device where your sprinklers won't go off if yep. it's raining. Mm-hmm. It's easy. Been around for eh, 50 years. Don't want to don't invest in that. Not going to save a few billion gallons a year? Really? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. All right. The other thing that drives me, oh, I, I had to go insane uh, Thursday night. Danny, I'm glad you got me going. Out here in Los Angeles, we have these freeway signs, these electronic freeway signs. Oh. These goddamn things must be five million bucks if they're a nickel. If you ever saw L.A. stories, it's the ones, the signs that talk to Steve Martin. And oh, it's going to revolutionize uh, drive time traffic. If you remember, right? it was a response to the fear of excess traffic in the '84 Olympics. Right. Those would put them on. It's going to be great because this is going to be like a motorist having his own crystal ball <laughs> into the future. He's going to pass under these things. They're going to tell him exactly what's happening. Well, they never say anything. They're black. They're just pitch black. And half the time, the goddamn freeways are shut off. And I would have got off the effing freeway if the sign had said S, but it said nothing. So I just kept motoring along and then hit some sort of bottleneck gridlock. And now everything stopped up because uh, the 101 to the 110 has been closed. But on Thursday night, Adam and I were driving by, and they told us what was going on. For those of you who are in Southern California, you, you would not know where this is, but it's about... 30 miles from where we are. Maybe 50 miles even. So Devore Pass or something. Peck Road? Yeah. Don't even know what it is. 
yeah. only heard it because some guy was hey, once in a while. You, you know, here's how you know where stuff is far away. When they're telling you to come on down and get them RVs and van conversions, yeah. they tell you to get off on Peck Road. Yeah, it's down that, along that, that means it's out there. Yeah. It's way out there. Yeah. So this sign, the same one I passed the night before that didn't tell me that the freeway a mile away had been closed down, was letting me know that uh, there was a little activity on Peck Road. <laughs> which was a million miles, miles yeah. from where I was. Yeah. So, so and I, by the way, when you got to the Hollywood Freeway, which was a mile from where we were, it was closed down to one lane. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, I th- I was saying to Drew, do they have some sort of inverse radius where they only report on things that are fifty miles away? Plus, like nothing inside of fifty miles would be worth reporting on. And who's manning those goddamn signs? And do they work? Well, they work. Because Peck Road, 50 light years from here, the road that you... And by the way, Peck Road ain't closed, yeah. and there's no bottleneck. It was one lane. And nothing one going lane on. Just one lane on a five lane in the middle of the night with yeah. no traffic yes. because nobody lives out there. That one lane is closed, which will make... Z- Here's the difference. You'll slow down from 80 to 79 <laughs> as right. you drive past right. the Peck Road lane. But right. that one lane, oh, that's a big deal. Yeah. Not the whole guy freeway being closed off just a half mile away that's not news to them who runs these goddamn things who pays for them how does peck road get priority over the whole goddamn 101 being closed down Uh, oh i swear to uh, god this town is just a just a bunch of tards and it's like you know what it is it's like we like it yeah. Somebody must like it. There must be something. I mean, I'm... We like the abuse. Yeah, I'm picturing some guy sitting in a control area, like, laughing and scratching his beard, saying, no, my little kittens, they like it. They like the pain. I'm not going to put all these arrows. I'm not going to synchronize anything. I'm going to... I'll make... I'll, and by the way, can they put something on a timer? I mean, does the arrow that works the same way at rush hour have to work the same on Sunday, 2 in the morning? Is that, there's no we can't there's no chip we haven't invented something that can control this yeah. really that's it to the point oh for Christ's sake what a dump we live in when when is someone going to step up and do something about this all right I just well, I just want everyone to know and all law enforcement personnel listen you know, Adam Carolla drives through every goddamn red arrow he comes into Adam. every single one of them every time you need to come with me my kids and pay a little paintball every yeah. time yeah there we go every God damn time. Every time. Give me a ticket. I don't give a rat's ass. It's, it's worth it. I've gone through 3,000, and I've got no tickets. I get one well worth it. Well worth it. And I, and I beg because, everyone by the way, the sound three, of my 3, voice 3, to do Because, by the way, 3,000 multiplied times three minutes. That's what's been yes. saved in your oh, life. Who, who knows how many drunk drivers could have T-boned me while I sat there at the green light with the red arrow <laughs> looking at no oncoming traffic. So... Again, I'm not telling everyone to do it when the light is red. It's when the light is green and there's no traffic coming. Use your own discretion. Ignore the arrow. Thank you very much. That's all I do. That's all I do. That's all I do. Three, three, nine thousand minutes you saved of your life. Think about that. Uh, just look, look, a-holes. Keep putting the arrows up. I just drive right through every single goddamn one of them. Uh, I can't, what's what is going burning? On? Someone's burning what, My here. brain is burning. You All right, that? Danny. Yeah, something's burning. Hey, real quick, back to the 15 zero inches. I, I queued this up, yeah. so can I please play it? Yeah. Here we go. How tall are you? I'm like 5'12". <laughs> Almost 6. <laughs> <laughs> that is my favorite. Yeah, that was good. All right, Danny boy. Sorry, you got me going uh, now. No, I'm, I'm sorry about that. I was that's all right. That's, that's all. You all understand. Right. That's all right. Okay, my question is, uh, every time that I have sex, actually, every time I jack off, for that matter, mm-hmm. um, I, I pinch it off at the very end and, uh, you know, run to the toilet or the the uh, trash can to let it go just just to save myself from the mess. And mm-hmm. I'm wondering, is mm-hmm. that bad? Am I, is something going to happen to me? Am I going to, like, you know, burst does, something it, eventually? Does, well, first of all, doesn't it sort of interrupt the pleasure of all that? No, not really, actually. I, I right. don't mind. I've gotten so used really? to Really? Because so. to me it feels like... A try to chore, sneeze, right? Yeah, sneezing with that. That's a, like a, a distracting chore, right yeah. in the middle of uh, orgasm. Well, you know, uh, I don't know. Okay. I, I developed a habit. And All right. All right. Here's like the deal. All right. Uh, secondly, yes, you can irritate your prostate and uh, cause some problems in the urethral outflow tract. Uh, secondly. And thirdly, how much of a mess is there as opposed to spraying a trash can of grabbing a little Kleenex? 
Well, is, that, well no, like, no. Like, like, listen, Danny. Or, or being near a off, toilet when you start off, all this. You, you've got to hone your technique so that you can do it like standing up in the shower. So oh, I can't. I can't. I can't. I've okay. tried. All right. Believe me. All right. Well, hey, hey, Danny, uh, yeah. when you use uh, words like I can't, uh, then you won't. <laughs> uh, okay? Because I couldn't either. But you know what? I overcame in the well, top. Every time I try, I'm always late for work. Takes a while. Well, yeah. that's that's you guys start getting up earlier. Uh, look, you, 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 right. you know what you need to work. You need to get a bib. You need to get a jack bib. <laughs> I'm telling you, rag. grab something from the hamper. How big a mess can that be as compared to what he's doing? I, I <laughs> the idea of pinching. First uh. off, I would rather have my mom burst into my room and yell at me to bust some dishes <laughs> while I was orgasming rather than pinch off my dork and then stand up uh. and make some sort of crazy craft my pants run for the bathroom. I, I, I couldn't... It, it, uh. it, I, I would... It would be a good way to get me to quit beating off. Yeah. It'd be like, oh, this Aversive is this annoying. Yeah, yeah this, this sucks. Is... Yeah. Uh, okay. Right. That's it. Come on. Get the bib thing. Yeah. There you go. I, I, I'm telling you, I laughed when I was 19. When I was when I was Danny's age, I laughed at the bib too. Really? Yeah. What did you do? My roommate, the Weeze, was trying to explain to me about the bib, and I laughed at him. What'd you take? What were you doing instead? That is making a mess on myself. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, <laughs> some of oh, it's still you probably there. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It was not pretty. Yeah, it's it's, it's no, peanut so, butter in the shag carpet. A lot of it's still there. Oh. A lot of it's still there. But anyway, I laughed at him, and you know what? Oh. He was right. And you know what? You saved humanity. It takes a very big man to admit when someone's right about the jack yeah. babe. Giselle. Yeah. Your uh, Giselle was uh, the name he wanted to use when he was patenting the uh, jack babe. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Call it the Giselle. Yeah. <laughs> Here's how it works. <laughs> we uh, use surgical tape to stick uh, the uh, one side of the Velcro to your sternum Yeah, right there. Yeah. And it's just permanently there. Yeah, yeah. You know, like people are on dialysis or have those little kidney machines or whatever. Yeah, they have or, a or jack the ports for, you know, ports Yeah, it's a port. It's a port. It's, it's just, it's surgically Velcro, yeah. it's, it's attached to your sternum. Yeah, surgically. And uh, then the bib, which uh, has a bullseye and a, a baseball diamond on the other side. <laughs> I rarely use it. Never use the diamond. Always but the, the Velcro's on both sides. You can attach either side. You just, yeah, you snap it on there. And uh, it's great. It's washable. It's a machine. You throw it right in the uh, dishwasher. Normal cycle. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. You have a few of them, don't you? You got it. Well, you got to keep one in the car. Yeah. You know, if you travel like I do. <laughs> just <laughs> a good name for it. The Giselle. Giselle, yeah. And there's an advanced one that uh, also attaches uh, sort of a, you, you attach it in the back like a cummerbund. Uh, actually, it becomes like the you know when you rent the tuxedo. Yeah, that kind of snap in the back. Yeah, you know it's like the just vest. to make sure it doesn't yeah. move. Yeah, just pull it around. And and if you and if you let it go, does it does it roll up and hit you in the chin? <laughs> yeah, only when you hit a high note yeah, when yeah, you're yeah. singing. Giselle. Yeah. All right, sorry. Now I can bye. never hear that name again without cracking up. Giselle. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Um, I had a question. Um. I wanted to know, like, if it's bad. Um, like, well, last night, me and my boyfriend, we had sex. And, um, if if what? Period. If it's I'm bad. On my, if it's oh. bad. Because um, I'm, I'm, I'm on my period, and we had, like, unprotected sex. But, like, I'm on the pill, so that's why we didn't use a condom. And you're I'm on the pill, so you're... Ha and you've finished more than one month of the pill? Yeah. Yeah, you you don't need to use a condom unless you're trying to protect yourself against sexually transmitted diseases. You're completely well, yeah, protected. but so I was on my period and um, we had yeah. But the pill the pill covers you the whole as so long as you take it, whether you're okay. on your period or not. Okay, but like I mean, like as far as like any diseases or like well, that's the more that's the more significant issue is that uh, you can get what are called ascending sexually transmitted infections mm -hmm. during a period that's sort of more of an open conduit to the higher parts of the genital tract. You can get pelvic inflammatory disease, that sort of thing. So from an infectious disease standpoint, the condom is important around the time of your period. But if it's a partner you've been with for a long time and he doesn't have any symptoms and you're feeling and fine now, it's really it's it's also good for the yuck factor too. The I mean, condom. Yeah. We were to protect your pristine skin. It's just kind of like the way you use the Giselle. Yeah. All right, Giselle. I have to ask you one more other question. Yeah. yeah. Oh, real quick. Do you know those, like, those pills that are supposed to make your boobs grow? Do those really work? No. no. 
No. No. If any, if anything would, the uh, birth control pill, the estrogens and the birth control pill for some women do. And they're finding actually now that liposuction makes some women's breasts grow too. Yeah. Well, yeah, my, my, they have grown with like my pills as well, but I've yeah. been kind of like questioning as far as getting like a boob job or like, No, like, you're fine. Pills. You're fine. Why do you need the boob job? I I don't know. I kind of I don't know. I just kind of want them. No, save that for the pros. What do you got? What do you got? A B cup? Um, I'm like in between a B and a C, but I. That's fine. That's the way most guys like it. Yeah, most women are going to a C cup when they get their enlargements done. So you're yeah. you're already there. They're going down to uh, something. When they're going down to a C. Out. If you take yeah. it out, exactly. C is what most people want. All uh, right. Good Let's times. uh the keep Giselle. Uh, roll along. Is there, is there a refinement on that name, the Giselle? The, G- the Giselle. Yeah, it's a great commercial. Yeah. Guys beating off, making a mess. But but fields of wheat. I see wheat's blowing in the wind. Walking around with... No, no, it's one of those, hey, uh, a guy's got a throw pillow stuck to his belly. <laughs> what happened, Bob? Why 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 couldn't you make league night the other night? The bowling team lost because, yeah, had this, had this uh, throw pillow cleaving to my uh, sternum. Huh. Haven't you heard about the Giselle? Giselle? What's that? I always like when they repeat it. They never just go, what's that? They got to repeat it, Giselle. and you, you almost never do that. In real like, life, like, yeah. yeah, like if you said uh, non, uh, like if you said uh, non gonococcus crop. What's your thing? Non gonococcal urethritis. You yeah. go, huh? Non gonococcal urethritis. Huh? What's that? No, you just go. What's, what's that? that? Yeah, yeah. So you do. It. What are you talking about? The Giselle. What are you talking about? Yeah. All right. It'd be one of those things too. If you acted now, we'd throw in another one, or maybe a travel Giselle. Or maybe a smaller one for uh, guys who are more accurate. <laughs> Just mop. <laughs> They'll go with the Giselle. You know, on the man show, we invented the uh, belly Zamboni. Yeah. Yeah. I like the Manulout. It's Masculout. Masculout. Yeah. That was his Come on, tell him what that it gets, was. It gets, pro, it gets stubborn protein stains. Male protein stains. Uh, that's right. Mom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What, there was a good good saying for it. It was like... Um, it was like uh, 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 put a squirt in every load or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> God. Well, it was in the washing machine. It had a contest. And I remember you had, the, you had the sort of 70s style housewife with her hands on her hip going, oh. is that another one of these? The dog was licking it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Masculine. Is that another one of your masculine stains? Protein stains? <laughs> yeah, David. Oh, my God. David. I'm here. Sorry about that. Yeah. What's up, baby doll? Uh, first, I just want to say you guys' show is awesome. Thanks. And um, I had a question, actually. I've been with my girlfriend for a while now, about a little bit over six months on and off. And uh, beforehand, after I had met her, but um, before we were actually together at all, um, I had slept with another girl. Mm-hmm. And um, the problem now is that um, I'm having a guilty conscience about telling her because she still thinks that I'm a virgin. And, yeah. Um, the, well, the, okay, the, hold on a second. You told her you were a virgin, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, I, I let her assume. You well, let yeah. her assume. Why, why mean? would she do that math? Oh, because he, he can't. Well, the sex. only issue, well, because she is too, and we had talked about this a couple of times about having sex, and I like yeah. I, as much as I like this other girl, I knew that I wouldn't stay with her. Have you had sex with this new girl? Uh, no, 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 I haven't had, had sex with my current girlfriend at all. Are you planning to? Well, maybe one day, yes. I haven't really thought about that much. Oh, huh? Yeah. I mean, it has been a while, but I I do love her, and she loves me, and that's just how we are. Wow. Well, hmm. I'm not sure anyone but, um, could answer this uh, one for you. Nah, I don't know. Honesty is always best, but then nah. again, wait, wait, wait. But you don't want to unload on her just to uh, improve your guilty conscience. i got to tell you, one of the things that is rarely discussed, but uh, I think Drew will back me up here, is... Um, Way too much disclosure. Uh, neither here nor there disclosure goes on in young relationships. More mystery, less history. Yes. The, so many. And, and this is age 15 to age 30. Mm. Uh, you know, who you've been with, what you do, have you ever tried this one, what about this? Uh, you know, there's some guy, they seem like they're friends, do you ever sleep with him? You know, that kind of stuff and mm-hmm. vice versa. The chick wants to know, look... Take some of that energy and just convert it into being a good partner and move ahead. Yeah, you don't want your person to have AIDS. you got to look into these things. Uh, outside of that, 
assume uh, they've had a couple of partners. They can assume you've had a couple of partners and uh, move forward. How about get into diligent honesty now? You know what I mean? Don't re- realize what it feels like not to be completely honest, and from now on be diligently honest. Yeah, I'm just saying, look, if you were uh, working as a male prostitute, uh, banging a lot of uh Korean businessman or something, uh, and you may have uh, five kinds of hepatitis. Uh, yeah, you got to pipe up. If you slept with uh, one chick in your in your dad's uh, camper one time, uh, don't disclose it. It's fine. Well, why freak her out? Why? It, it, I'm not saying it for you. I'm saying it for her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it, people, you know, people don't really need to know that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. Yes, but it's, it sort of sets up a weird situation where he's trying to live up to an ideal that she demands. Yeah. And she needs to be not that way, too. All right. You well, know what I mean? Let's, don't say anything. That's, yeah. that's all I'm saying. Yeah. All right. Tina? Yes? You're 24? Yes, I am. What is up? Um, well, I'm bipolar uh, with psychotic features. Nice. Like, Feature, oh psychotic features. Oh, when yeah. were you last psychotic? Um... I hear voices and I have hallucinations. When did that last happen to you? You're um, insane. It usually happens when I'm tired. Uh, I see hallucinations. You, Tina, answer my question or Adam will hang up on you. When did that week, last, uh, last happen week to you? Was last last week. Okay. And are you on medication right now? I am. I'm on Zyprexa and Wellbutrin. And is, are you recently on the Zyprexa? Um, about a month. Okay. Is that helping? Yes. It's all right. the best one I've been on out of all yeah. of them so far. Yeah, for this kind of thing, it works very, very well. Mm. Yeah. And uh, are you on a mood stabilizer also? Um, no, just Cyprexa and Wellbutrin. How come no Depakote or Trileptol or something? Um, I'm allergic to Trileptol. Uh, I was one of the few people that got the funky rash, so I yeah. didn't take that. Yeah. Mm. But um, De- my question Depa- is... Depakote? No, um, I haven't tried that one yet. All right, that's your next piece of work. That'll be the next one. That's yeah. the next. So what's the question? The question is, I'm very hypersexual, and hmm. what I want to know is if it's because of the bipolar or if it's yes. me or the medication. No, it's, it's the bipolar, unless you were sexually abused as a child, because that tends to sort of wire that in also. But uh, definitely bipolar, particularly. I mean, the fact that you have psychotic features means you tend to be manic all the time. Yeah, right? most of the yeah. Time. And so mania, part of being manic is is being hypersexual. Yeah. And if now also you had sexual abuse in childhood, well, that's another thing that kind of wires that into your system. <laughs> well, yeah. it takes all kinds. <laughs> you know, you know my theory. Were you were you abused when you were younger? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. I think so, but I think I've like repressed it, so I'm not sure. Really. Uh, who, do you think therapy, you? So. Who, who do you think abused you? My sister. Ooh, that's really? interesting. What happened yeah. to her? <laughs> She's married to a pedophile. But that's the point. Ooh. What happened? What happened, yeah, to, what her? happened to her? She I don't know. I don't know. Like it's, my family well, doesn't talk about it. Somebody well, sexually abused thing. her yeah. for if sure. If she married a pedophile and you think she may have abused you, then she uh, was abused herself. Sexually. Yeah, but I don't know who would have done it. I don't know. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. But, you know, good times. Uh, you know. <laughs> I know, all in the family, right? <laughs> yeah, listen, you stick with that... Uh, Zyprexa. Stick with that Zyprexa and that therapy, and you'll be fine. Yeah, thanks, guys. All, all right, right good luck, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good times. Ooh, it's tough to deal with that, huh? Mm, yeah. I think life's hard enough. Imagine dealing with... Uh, you're spinning all the time, you hear voices, and you can't make judgments. And yeah, you, I don't Because your biology's off. Maybe they're lucky. And you're busy masturbating five times a day. Oh, for you, that wouldn't be so busy, would it? I know five seems a little light. Yeah. I'd like to see that. Uh, I'd like to see you get up to double digits. Yeah. Sure, she yeah, can. start making a Giselle for the ladies. Mm. Mm-hmm. What do they call it? Jazim? Oh. <laughs> Jazim. Sounds like, you know, Jazim is something you yell to, to summon your genie. Jazim! <laughs> yes, my lady. Bim, bim, Jazim. <laughs> All right. Drew's aside, it's time to go weed. Yeah. Yes? Oh, yeah. All right. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, yo. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191 is the phone number. I'll tell you something about this show, kids. It's not about me. It's not <laughs> about Drew. It's not about our fine crack Loveline staff. It's about you. It's about the callers. That's what drives the show. Mm. You are the show. 
That's why we get the five calls a night. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because if you weren't the show, we'd probably only get to two or three calls ah, a night. I see. But as it is, we average a call every 26 and a half minutes <laughs> because you are the show. Uh, you understand? Here. Yeah, I understand. Now, let me tell you something else that you guys are. You're, uh, you're the motivation. You're, you're the engine behind the show. We wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't come in here night after night if you guys weren't calling. You know what I mean? So we need you more than you need us. Okay. Yeah. You ready to roll here, Drew? Here we go. Because I'm all about getting the calls. <coughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? No, I know that about you. Because they're the show. Yeah. Let me see if Chris has been listening. Chris, pop quiz. Who's the show? Is it me? Is it Drew? Or is it the callers? It's the callers. All right, you're fired. <laughs> I don't want to see your puss around here again. Did you hear that, Drew? Yeah, I heard it's crazy. All yeah, right. he thinks he thinks the callers are the How show. How dare he? Yeah. I'm going now. Yeah, please. Bye. Skedaddle. Melinda? Yes. You're 18? Yes. What's up? Um, I'm kind of having difficulty orgasming, and uh, I was wondering if you guys can help me with that. You're 18? Yes. And you've never had an orgasm? Oh. No, I, I have. You oh. have? No, I have, but I've, lately I've been having trouble. Are you on any medication? No. How were you able to do it in the past? Um, usually, like, um, Good oral question. sex or... Um, yeah. Or what? I don't know. Or, yeah. Masturbation? N I've never masturbated before. It's hard for 18, 22-year-olds to masturbate. Well, it no, doesn't work well, then, very well. Hold Women, on. Uh, girls. Never done it before. Yeah. Uh, she, I've uh, never... Well, I've, like, felt around, but I've never actually... Um, could you imagine an 18-year-old guy? I mean, I, I'm not saying I haven't touched my penis a time or two. I mean, like, well, I'm going number one. I'll shake it out a I little. I felt around. One time I got an erection in uh, gym class. I'd adjust myself. So, phys you know, technically I made contact with my penis, but no, I never really stroked it or anything <laughs> <laughs> you imagine that coming out of an 18 year old guy's mouth? Sure, I've touched it. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've dumped some talc on Could it. Could figure out what to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. Try hey, Melinda. <laughs> okay, so here's the part I'm curious about. We're asking about how you orgasm. It took you a while to say oral sex. And then there's another way you orgasmed, or you just made it seem that way? Wait, what's the question? Oh, boy. Um, Melinda. Yes. What are the ways you've had an orgasm in the past? Um. Uh, usually by my partner uh, oh, doing on. stuff to me, never by myself. Stuff. Okay. What stuff is that? Um, like having sex and. Uh, so you've had that. you've had an orgasm during intercourse. Um. No. 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 Yeah. She's not had nothing during anything, is the bottom line here. She sort of said during oral sex, didn't she? All right, here's the bottom line, Linda. Most 18 to 20 or 2-year-old girls, women, have difficulty having an orgasm. They hate men. Very few will Keep have talking, an orgasm brother. during intercourse. Yeah. Those that can orgasm will do so with oral sex. And a, and a majority of women will never have an orgasm with intercourse. They will only have it with direct stimulation like oral sex. A majority, mm -hmm. their whole mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. There is about 10% that will have orgasms at the gym. Every time they have an intercourse, every time they have... And those girls, those women tend not to like oral sex, interestingly. Yeah. They tend to just have orgasm with intercourse. Well... So there's, there's sort of the spectrum. They're there. passionate, passionate women. But Drew... You know, you always we always talk about the sort of origins of things and what did uh, nature have in mind when he created man this way or woman that way. And eh, most of the stuff you do a little scraping around and it starts to make sense. Mm. What did man have in mind with women not? I mean, what did God have in mind with uh, women not having orgasms through intercourse? The vast majority of them. Do you think the population would just spin out of control? I mean, okay, let me answer my own question. If women had orgasm with intercourse and were that, would they then eventually just sort of become as gung ho almost as men yes, were to possibly, have sex possibly. and then venereal disease? And, and well, here's the deal then, then women in the old days, women died in childbirth mm -hmm. and or died from pelvic infections that men introduced into them. Right. And so there would be no women to raise the children. Right. And so all the children would die. 
Right. So you had to sort of had women not quite as driven into this, though at least the same way that men are. Right. So they could actually stick around. To, to right. So the the, the species the, the 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 sort of nature answer would be if women were as uh, horny as men, not just horny, but as driven to intercourse. Cause, yeah, cause just women for are, lack yeah. of a better term. Yeah, uh, I, I horny mean, in the same way as men. I yeah, the then there'd just be a whole bunch of everyone would be just dying off of venereal disease and, pregnancy, the and childbirth, pregnancy. childbirth, right? And so and or the population. If, if would a woman spin had out. five children, she probably would die. You know right. what I'm saying? She probably wouldn't live through five pregnancies. Back that, in the day. Yeah, that'd be un- almost unheard of. Right. But they lived through a couple of pregnancies, uh, pretty good chances. All right. One out of five. All right. And and what about women who do have the orgasm with intercourse? Are they usually a little more good to go? You know what I mean? Are the, are the likelihood of sleeping with one of them that you meet at a bar going to be better than the one that doesn't? I, I mean, as as a man of passion... I don't you know, know what I'm saying, Drew? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Probably. Uh, Probably, you'd, I guess. You'd take your chances with the one that had the big O through intercourse if someone said, look, you got to just go out and try to pick up a random chick. Uh, go to the bar with those chicks. Uh, Wouldn't probably. you take your chances probably. with that group? Yeah. Give it a little higher batting average? Probably. Yeah. But I don't know that those are the ones that are more androgenically driven, necessarily. You know what I mean? There's, there's a group of women that have a more masculine quality to their sexual drive, and I'm not sure that's the same ones that have the multiple orgasms. I, th- I think that's. Yeah. I think those are more the ones that have orgasms uh, sometimes with intercourse. They're the noisemakers. <laughs> they're like party favors. It's, it's New Year. Every day is New Year's in their vagina. Good times. Spread their legs. <laughs> the thing comes out, folds back in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that slow me down momentarily, but I'd get over it. Yeah. All right, uh, let's talk to uh, Mike. Who's uh, did we answer her question? 20? I don't know. What did she want? I don't know. She, she wanted an orgasm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Oh, I've been up since 7 this morning. I'm whooped. Mike? Hey, what's up? Hey, 20, what's going on? Um, well, I recently uh, broke up with my girlfriend. She was my first girlfriend. Um, she was my first serious girlfriend, and I uh, pretty much thought that she was uh, the girl of my dreams. Um, but uh, we had sex uh, a few months into the relationship, and after... She told me that she had herpes, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I she was had ge- with genital her. herpes, right? Yes. Okay. Um, and she told me that her doctor said that there's no way she could transfer it to me um, because her outbreaks are very, um, it's not big at all. You know, there's uh, she hardly ever she's she's only had one outbreak. Well, maybe, maybe the diagnosis was wrong, number one. Uh, and I'm sure you didn't say it's impossible to transmit. It's just less likely since she has well, infrequent well, outbreaks. But you can't tell. I actually did go to the doctor, and I do have herpes now. And, um, and what was it that sent you to the doctor? Well, I had some type of rash. Um, it wasn't uh, an outbreak. It was something else. Um, he said that the doctor said it was uh, some type of... Um, yeast infection from, that I got from her or something. And then how did he make the diagnosis of herpes? Well, I got a blood test. They can't make a diagnosis on a blood test. Drew, no way. Mike. Really? i got to be honest with you. Drew's been uh, making the bogus puss for a good 10 minutes, and this call's only a minute 45 <laughs> old. He's, uh, he smells bogus. He's sniffing bogus here. Now, I would sniff bogus, too, except for someone turned the TV on in the next <laughs> studio, and I've been watching some sports highlights, so I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, my. Uh, but let's just say if I was here and focused, I would be thinking bogus, too, just because I usually agree with Drew and his bogus call. So, you want to fess up? Uh, wait, what's the what? Bogus. But the About having herpes? How about the call? The whole call. The whole call seems uh, like there's a few holes in it. Yeah. What, what, what do you mean? I don't understand. Mm-hmm. Well, my question, yeah. He's going deeper now. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, well, the doctor said I had herpes. Yeah, blood test is no way to make that diagnosis, so there you go. Okay, I do not understand that because I went to my school doctor. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's a diagnosis. That blood test has been largely abandoned unless there's a high suspicion of active herpes. Okay. All right, but the question is, is what? 
Okay, well, I've always had an issue with uh, how many guys my ex-girlfriend had been with. And uh, when I found out that I got herpes from her, um, it really made me jealous about all our previous relationships. And I was just wondering if that's something psychologically wrong with me or um, no. if this is normal. And you I already feel, knew I she feel, had herpes, though. Oh, hold on. I just feel bad for my <laughs> Look, Mike, here's the... Uh, Here's the thing. We were just talking about this a little earlier tonight. Twenty-year-old guys are a disaster when it comes to this kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. You just you have a lot of you just have bravado, bravado. bravado. You have you have a lot of hormones raging and testosterone, and it just it's always going to bother you. Everything's going to bother you. And here's the reality. Yeah, if she was with fifty guys before she got to you, that's going to bother you. If she was with one guy before you, you will then channel into that yeah. one guy. Yeah. If she was with no guys. You will figure out something that it that is it it, it, it it's like this is going to be a self fulfilling prophecy for twenty year old guys who uh, I I wish there's something they could do other than just get old and not care. Uh, you have to think. It, I'll I'll tell you what's I'll tell you what's sort of liberating. Uh, I used to do it back in the day when uh, this thing came up and I was bothered by this or that. I would just think to myself, look, are you going to marry this person? You're, you know, you're 20. Yes, you're yes, 21. this is the one. No, That's what I your would. brain does. I think to myself, I'm 20, I'm 21. This chick, uh, first of all, is she going to marry me? I well, don't that's, think so. I think, where your head went. Yeah, I, she's not going to marry me. I'm not going to marry her. Why be miserable during the time when we're uh, trying to have a good time? Yeah. How about just uh, get getting your kicks in, having a good time, and uh, not holding her feet to the fire? Stop asking so many questions. And I don't know. One more aphorism, okay? And, and a new <laughs> broom will sweep clean. <laughs> there you clean. go, okay. All right. I, 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 other than just, like, chill out, dude, I don't know what to say. Other than everyone thinks this way, every 20-year-old guy thinks this Mike way at one time. very night. anxious, very. Yeah. To, it's, he's hanging on what this doctor said. I'm not sure it was a, may have been a physician's assistant or something, because it's, it's sort of jumped to a diagnosis, rather. You may want to see a dermatologist or a sexually transmitted disease specialist if you really want to get this nailed down. But someone who's actively involved in that field, because it changes frequently. No, that's a good time, sir. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Love Island. All right, let's get back to the phones. Amanda. Yeah? You're 19? Uh-huh. What's up? Um, okay, like, yesterday, I had a pee, and, like, when I did, like, I felt pressure, and, like, I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Let's say probably a urine infection. Mm-hmm. You need to see your doctor tomorrow. Ooh. Because those can be dangerous. Yeah. Million what? I don't have insurance, and that'll cost like a million dollars. It'll cost about thirty-five dollars. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? That's it? Yeah. Maybe. What, what do they do to just, check that? Just check, look. You're on a microscope. Look for the white cells in there. Take your history. Mm -hmm. That's that. Maybe maybe go to a walk-in clinic or something. But you can get if you don't take care of it, it can get up into your kidney and cause real serious problems. You got some kind of woman's clinic around there? Yeah. All right. All right. Go over there. Okay. You have you have are you having sex? Mm hmm. All right. Do you That's go to the woman's clinic to get birth control and stuff? Um, well I'm not, but okay. All right, you need to do that too then. How about right? that? Yeah. Okay. What's going on, baby? <laughs> I don't know. Well what's up? You having sex? You wanna get pregnant? No. You're what? going to get pregnant, right? Mm, I don't know. Well how could you not get pregnant if you're having sex and not taking precautions? How would that work? Um, I guess I will then. All right, please. Again, uh, calling all tards. Here's the thing, everybody. Feel free to be stupid. <laughs> By all means, be stupid. But but be smart enough to realize you're stupid and do a couple of things. You know, don't ride a motorcycle without a helmet in the rain. You know what I mean? It's just understand. Like like here's the ah uh, here's what I'm saying. This is what you got to do. When I'm drunk, I know I'm drunk. You see what I'm saying? And uh, if I drive drunk, I never drive like a maniac. I drive like a maniac when I'm sober because uh, if I get pulled over, I don't care. Right. If I ever had a few beers and get behind the wheel of the vehicle and drive, I drive mm, like my dad drives. <laughs> We're going 34. Yeah. Why? Because I, if I get pulled over... It's bad times. It's bad times. But I'm aware of it. Now, the people that get into trouble... 
And I don't know. Everyone thinks, oh, you're setting a horrible example. Yeah, listen, don't drink and drive. But here's the here's reality. I've, I've had a few beers and got behind the wheel before. I'm not going to lie to you. And here's the thing. At .08, I could easily be at that. Who the hell knows? Eh, I've never gotten an accident. I know I've been lucky. I've been real lucky. Here, okay. Here's the point. Uh, if you're the guys who get into trouble, the guys who get drunk don't know they're drunk. Figure they're going to go in the uh, Gelson's parking lot and do some donuts for a while, and then the cop shows up. This is what happens, and this same with dumb people. They're 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 dumb, and they're going to live the life of a dumb person. No, know you're dumb, and go get some birth control. Know you're dumb, and put a helmet on. Yeah. Now, can you be both? And, and by the way, listen. Can you be both? Can you be both? What do you mean both? Can you be dumb and follow advice, be dumb and put a helmet on, be responsible? If you're dumb, will you necessarily not listen to people and not? uh, I argue no. Yeah, you can be dumb and dumber. If dumber is when you stop listening to everybody. Great movie. All right, so if you ain't too sharp, that's fine. Just listen to people that are sharp and do what they tell you to do. It's very simple. Yeah, Amanda's got to get herself on some birth control and get herself checked out for a urine infection. Judy? Yes. You're 19? Yes. What's up? Um, I believe I'm sex obsessed. Mm-hmm. Sexually addicted? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. But I don't know what the warning signs are. Well, I don't know it's, if it's I all am about, a sex addict. It's all about the consequences. It's about having sex that you don't want to have or having sex in spite of serious things happening in your life. Relationships getting screwed up, spending too much money having health problems, getting legal problems. Mm-hmm. These sorts of things are happening that you keep you know, obsessing about sex. And usually when people are engaging in sexual behavior at that level, it's because they were sexually abused mm-hmm. as a kid. Mm-hmm. Did that happen to you, Judy? They were what? Usually because they were sexually abused as a child. Uh, yes, I was. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. So it's obviously troubling you, and you can't stop, and you have sexual abuse history, and that pretty yeah. much adds up. Who did this to you? I can't say. All right. Well, I'm going to go dad. dad. <laughs> why couldn't you say? Do you think we know your dad? No. So why couldn't you say? I can't say. I don't know. Well, okay. Actually, you need to come to terms with this a little bit. All right. Me? You need to. F- you need some treatment. Yeah, some I do. Where yeah. can Where can I go? Delamo. You live in Los Angeles. Delamo Treatment Center's got a good sexual addiction program. Sexual addiction. Delamo. Okay. Delamo. Delamo Treatment Center. Okay. Hey, uh, Judy, and yeah. here's the uh, here's what you need not to do. You need to not get pregnant. No, I'm on birth control. Good, good. Now, are you with one guy or are you with multiple guys? Uh, with one or two. Yeah, this is not a one guy compulsion. No. All right. No. You need the thrill crazy stuff in here, too. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank well, look, you. You, you know what you're doing, right? Yeah, I do. I just don't know right. how to stop it. Well, you got to get some treatment, and you got to work at it a little bit, and you got to get some help for uh, what uh, whatever family member did you back when. Okay. Mm. Sorry, uh, someone did that to you, but uh, now, unfortunately, all right. I got to make one of my car analogies, but <laughs> it, it's really, it's like. Uh, Sometimes you're driving your car and the guy backs into you and he's he's fully covered and he gets insured and blah, 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 and this guy's going to pay for it and blah, blah, blah. And then other times you just come out of your driveway one day and some drunk driver smashing your car while it's the street and there's nothing around. Right. Yeah, now, here's the problem. It's not your fault. Nothing you did. Uh, can't be blamed, but yet you got a car that uh, pulls pretty hard to the left. Right. What are you going to do? The problem is that the age at which this stuff happens, kids tend to feel responsible for it. It's yeah. a grandiosity that they maintain now throughout their life where they feel responsible for everything you, that happens to you, them. You, you are going to be shimming at uh, 55 for the rest of your <laughs> life. Make it 30. Uh, unless you take this car into the shop, even though it wasn't your fault. That's it. Yeah, no, it's, and, and it's not fair. No. It's not fair. It ain't fair. <sighs> it's break time. All right, Drew. Yeah. I'm thinking paintball. I'm thinking about when I got my car totaled when I was watch I was watching my car Ooh. getting told when I announced to my dad that it would get told. And it did. Yeah. Wow. I gotta to talk to you about that off the air, Drew. It's a very strong, great magnet thing. When you, you were convinced it was gonna happen and it did. The car was rejecting air conditioning and I knew when I forced it on it that it would be short-lived somehow. <laughs> you understand that concept? No, I don't. You don't understand that? How did the car reject the air conditioner? 
to tell you. I, I, I will not have this air conditioner in my dashboard. Well, no, it's not kit. Ah. I, I, I'm going to talk to you about it off the air because it's powerful. It's yeah. a powerful story. Right. It's it's like a parable. Okay. Yeah. Good thing. Uh, oh, yeah. And they got the, they got the culprit. Oh, no, Jesus Christ. Oh, he paid you. Oh, no, wait. He did. Us idiots. Yeah, I know. Oh, you guys, you Van Nuys Courthouse. You yeah. guys should all kill yourselves. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Yeah, everybody. Well, that's the show. Hey, tomorrow night, a uh, little gal by the name of Sharon Osborne, dear, dear, dear friend. Dear, dear, dear. In here tomorrow night. So, until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Annie Gold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.